we're gonna go from this to this welcome back to our shop remodel what a terrible day out here it's warm it's like summertime oh we got dark oh look at that orange glow remember we built this over here told you the next thing we got to do is lighting that's what we're going to do today i went to costco yesterday this is going to be terrible and we picked up these shop lights 30 dollars each canadian and they're four feet long so we're going to get them installed on the ceiling they plug in and you can daisy chain these things so that they'll all come on at the same time and that's what we're going to do so we're going to check out how hard it is to mount these things and just how much light they're going to give off so these are called coda multi-directional shop light now we look on the side here you can set them so they'll come straight down off to the sides or all out well <laughs> we're going all out we'll get this thing opened up we'll see what we're working with here plastic I really don't care that it's plugs into your standard outlet on the end and a pull chain and once these are daisy chained together because you go to the other end here and this is where they'll daisy chain together pretty cool idea hopefully it works and we'll see what the mountings like on these this is the hardware. Now it comes with chains, so you can hang them from the ceiling if you want. I prefer to flush mount them, so these are the brackets that they come with. And these will just snap onto the back. But we're going to flush mount these on the 2x4s on the ceiling. It even comes with a template so that I can't screw it up. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'll screw it up. All right, we're going to get these things mounted up and we're going to see how they look. I'm going to make sure these are centered on the 2x4 as I blind myself with the light. And fall off the ladder. The screws they give you for these are pretty small, so I've got my own. see that screw again now I may have already started this one backwards this is the second one I put up so what I want to do is I want the plug end down here because it's going to plug into the back end of that one over there One side of the clip in. Oh, there it goes there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and plug it into that end there. So it's supposed to work, I guess. All right, we got our last one marked out here. So now we want to make sure that that is going to plug into that. Then the new one, well, the third one that goes up here is going to plug into there. And it's going to end up plugging into the wall over here. What can go wrong? All right, here we go. That's not right. I can see it already. All right, we're going to go with it, though. We're going to switch it around this way. Apparently, it's going to plug into the front now, not the back. It is what it is. Then over here. Then over here. No, we're not. He's got to go over here.
I put it on backwards. I was right the first time when I was going to put it up the other way. Give me a minute. You have to call me Redo Larry. I mean, come on. The deal is. Yep, that's the deal. I'm going to go with it. There we go. Up over the top. And then over the top of that one, that guy's going to plug in the end of here. Then we're going to untie this one. That thing's almost childproof. I'm going to end up getting an extension cord because it has to go plug in down there. So. For the meantime, we're just going to string it across there and see if we can make these things work. Oh boy. Oh boy. Whoa. Will you look at that? Oh my God. No more orange glow. And I can see what I'm doing. Oh, am I happy with that? Will you look at the lighting? No more orange glow when I'm trying to make a video in here. This is fantastic. Now, if I shut this one off, oh, well, I thought it would shut the rest of them off, but it don't. Not a big deal. Wow. So these lights are 30 bucks a piece. So in total, with tax and everything, probably cost me about 105 bucks. Because in Canada, we got, well, we got lots of taxes. But check that out. I was using these work lights here. I had two of those up. You know, the bulbs were burning out up here. But man, the only issue is, and the reason I wanted it into this outlet right here, and you see there's another work light there. The reason I wanted it into here was I wanted to be able to come in, plug it in, everything lights up, and away you go. Not really a big deal. It just means I got to now walk to the front and plug it in, and then everything is lit up and set to go. But what I am going to do is get another extension cord and run it along the 2x4, and then down the wall so I can just reach over and plug that in. That way I don't have this cord hanging here. Well, what a huge difference. A huge difference. Makes me happy. That, along with this, for our storage, as you've all seen before. I was going to try and patina this up a little bit. Farmer Paul said, uh, don't you dare. He likes it the way it is, so I, I like it the way it is too. But I got a big 55 gallon drum that we're going to do something special with because I'm not happy with this toolbox. I think I can make that 55 gallon drum into a toolbox or at minimum storage so we can get rid of the shelves over here. It is obviously the next day and man, what a difference those lights make. It is like daylight in here. I'm going to have to get my rays I might have to get my sunglasses out. Anyway, we got to continue on the shop remodel. Remember this year? I really like that. Well, we need more storage because, like I said before, I want to get rid of this stuff right here. Possibly get rid of that. What am I going to do to get rid of that? Well, I happen to have this sitting behind the shop. It's a 55 gallon drum. I do have the top for it and the band that goes around it to tighten the top on it. What if. We turn this into shelves by using the grooves there. Put plywood there and plywood on that one there. And cut us a big old door. And paint it up in the somewhat the same theme. I'm, I'm digging the orange. I'm digging the super test side of this. I do have another super test decal. Decal. Is it a decal or a decal? Decal sounds odd to me. Maybe it's just because I'm Canadian. Let me comment down below. Is it decal or decal? I'm not quite sure how you're going to type it so I know the difference. But number one, decal. Number two, decal. Let's do it that way. Anyway, so that's the plan today. We are going to sand this down, get rid of the stickers on there. We're just going to give this rust down here a ride on a wire wheel. And we're going to cut us a door out. I'm going to paint it up. We're going to start by drawing out our door. Now, you want to make sure you use a black marker on a black drum. Oh, 
You moved. Can't move. Hard to see, but we got our black line here and our black line here for our straight up and down. Now I want to come down maybe maybe three inches from the top. I want to come up about six inches from the bottom. Problem. I don't have a ruler that bends. I do have a roll of paper over there. I can cut myself out a six inch template for here and a three inch template for there. Tape it on. Draw my line. Cut it out. That's what we'll do. That's our template for the top. We're going to get that drawn on there before it decides to say, before it decides it doesn't want to be there anymore. There we go. There's our top one. We got the bottom one done and we're good to go. Alright, our templates worked out good. Like I said, we got three on the top, six on the bottom. We're going to pull them off now, take it outside, and cut out the door. Now, this door is going to have hinges on it. To save myself a hassle, I'm not going to cut the door out completely. I'm going to cut it out, but I'm going to leave the corners. The reason I'm leaving the corners is because I'm going to mount the hinges before I actually cut the corners out. That way, I get the proper gap here. And I'm not struggling, causing myself a bunch of unneeded stress trying to hold the door and bolt the hinges on. Trying to work smarter, not harder. Sometimes that's a challenge. Right, we're going to take the cutoff wheel and get this door cut out. Show you all what I did here. I'm sure, you know what I mean, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So here I've got the corners, not quite cut. Same one down there, same here, the same over here. So when I go to mount the hinges, which I'm gonna put them on this side, but I'll show you here. I can screw and bolt the hinge, screw and bolt the hinge. I've got the proper gap in between, and then I don't have to fight with it. So we are going to mount our hinges right here and right here. So that the door will open up this way. Put a nice wooden top on this so that if I don't use it for the toolbox, I'm going to put a brand new bandsaw on it that Eric and Luke bought me for Christmas. So let's get these hinges mounted. We just have a set of ordinary hinges. Black, because why not? But we are definitely not using this hardware. Alright, so it turns out I thought, well... I thought I had plenty of nuts in here because my father has all kinds of stuff here that he left me and uh, I'm like, you know, I got to have nuts to fit these. Turns out, I don't have the right nuts. Story of my life. Got our holes marked out for our hinges. Again, you got to use a black marker on a black barrel, okay? <laughs> See, when you do it this way, you're not fighting to try and maintain the gap. Once I got the hinges on, I'm going to go back, I'm going to cut the corners, and then we'll have a swinging door. Top hinge is on. It's not tight, but it's on. We're going to knock the bottom one out, and I'll get back to you. All right, we're going to get these all snug down. Kind of over, kind of short a bolt there, but it's not going to hurt for what we're doing today. All right, we're going to get this thing back outside. We're going to cut the corners, and we'll see if she swings. Can you give me 10 minutes? Okay. No, no. Jesus, come on. You good? You good? 
flapper wheel and clean up the edges a little bit here. So it'll be cut. Look up. I know you want to help geez but you got no fingers. Okay? You can't help. You got no fingers. I know. I know. I know. So look up buddy. Go. Look up. Also thinking I'm gonna need a handle and for a handle well I've got about six of these oil spots so what I'm thinking is maybe take one of these so this one's in pretty bad shape it's all rusted up and nobody's done anything to it screw that on there for the handle all right gonna be perfect but before I get too far ahead of myself here, the thing that I dread most is sanding, and guess what? Well, sanding is next, and I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to knock it out. Go grab yourself coffee, have a seat, and we'll be right back. Just had a thought. Before I sand all that down, my poor self has not ate all day. I just started the fire, cleaning up the barbecue grates. I got some oak wood on there, some cherry on there, probably a little bit of maple going to go in there. We're going to get that down to the coals. And we're going to cook ourselves a nice steak. All sanded up. We got the label sanded down. They're not going to cause me any issues. Uh, same with this label over here. It's pretty much gone. That rust down the bottom is just loose. I just wire wheeled all that. All you do is wipe it down. We're ready for paint. But first, I'm getting these coals knocked down for the steak and potatoes. A man's meal. I'm gonna catch some heat for that one. It was so good I almost forgot to show you. Won't tease you no more. It is the next morning and we are about to start adding some color. I've got everything all sanded down. Got it all wiped down. Looks like a little bit of rust there. We'll be okay there. We're not gonna worry about that. I'm holding the door semi-even by using my welding blank blankets. That's not a welding blanket. That's a welding cab. It's not a welding cabinet either. Whew, I'm having a little bit of trouble today. Maybe I need another coffee. By using my welding magnets. Hopefully that'll keep the door in place. Anyway, first thing we're going to add is the orange to the top ring. And then the bottom ring. We're going to let that set up. Then we're going to get a second coat on it. And then uh, we'll mask that off and do the white. All right, first coat of orange is on. It's not exactly warm mode. No, it's not too bad in here, but it's not exactly warm. I'm going to let that sit for a while. Come back out and put a second coat of orange on it. That should cover up any of the light spots we got here. And as you see, I come over the edge down to here. Because from here, because from this line to this line is where it's going to be white. 
this makes dividing the two colors a little easier I once tried to do it in the center of this right here and it just looked dumb so I will either go all the way down or all the way up I've done both but I prefer to go all the way down anyway we're gonna let that dry up we're gonna come out and hit it with a second coat and we'll mask it off and go on to white well it's been a few hours and it got cold it's, it was a little tacky I put the second coat on it by the way didn't bother boring you with watching me paint a barrel but uh, it's covering up pretty good I've got the heat on over here hopefully that's going to help it but we're fighting the weather once this dries up we're then going to go to the white well, it's got to be dry though because we've got to mask all this off the last thing I want to do is start pulling the orange paint off so we're going to keep the heat on it let it dry up and then we're going to go to the white well it's been several hours and we are back I got the orange on and it's dry nice and dry all the way around looks pretty good it covered good i was using the uh i, don't know if I showed you the trim clad rust paint but it seemed to cover really good what we're going to do now is we're going to mask this off on this line we're going to put it back in the paint booth and uh ella's going to paint it <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No funds. We're all masked off all the way around. We're going to push this back in the spray booth. Right there. And call Earl Shad. Are you Earl Shad? I don't know what that means. Way too young for Earl Shad. Alright, let's get going. We got the second coat of paint on. Ella said I wasn't paying her enough, so uh, she bailed on me. That's going to be it for tonight. We'll come back out here in the morning when it is all good and dry. And I think we're going to do something special to it. The only thing left to do as far as paint goes is to touch up around the hinges. Why? Because we want it to at least look good from the road. We got a little bit on there. A little steady hand. Not so much. You all gonna lose your mind here because I am not a professional decal installer. I just want to make sure it's straight up and down and roughly in the middle. Well, it went on a whole lot nicer. This is uh, proving to be a little more difficult to get off, shall we say. There we go.
Well, there we are. Didn't even lose any paint. Look at there. A couple air bubbles, nothing major. Again, you're not going to see that from the street. But that looks pretty good. Might get a gasoline sticker for the top or something for the bottom here. That looks pretty good. In my opinion. I am now a professional painter, a professional bench maker, and a professional decal installer. Before I get too carried away, I need to clean up this handle. This is a vintage oil spout. Some of you folks that are as old as I am or older will know what these are. I remember my pop having some uh, oil cans that come in a quart. They were cardboard with a metal top. You would just stab that in there, puncture the top, and pour your oil out. Wish I had some of them oil cans now. I mean, chrome was all the rage back then. I mean, chrome. everybody knows chrome added at least 30 horsepower. I'll get back to you when I'm done this. Remove the set screw out of the bottom, and then you can remove the part that stabs into the oil can. That needs to be cleaned up. Just a little bit of surface rust, nothing major. Get her put back together here. line up the hole in the bottom it's funny the washer on this little set screw is leather we're gonna see that again we found it we found it Gotta get it lined up. There we go, right there. And just like that, it is clean and back together. Now, I just gotta figure out how to make it work. Because I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. Welcome back. Brand new day. Trying to get finished here on the barrel project. Now look at we've got the uh, shelves in here. All that is yeah, I've got things kind of cluttered up in here. That's a fence board. That's a 1x6 pressure treated fence board. I put three of them on top just like that. Took a marker drew my lines and cut them out on my bandsaw. On the back side of these here I got another one cut for the bottom here. Bear with me folks. All I did on the bottom was here just cut some scrap pieces here and screw them together. So this one here is going to be the bottom shelf. Well, the second ring shelf here. But these are not overly secure. They're just sitting in the groove. So you start putting too much weight on there, they're going to work their way out. Same with this one down here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill some holes in here. Put a, probably six or eight all the way around there. And same down there. And I'm going to put wood screws through here into the back of here that'll help secure it a little better because i don't want to start putting brackets and bracing inside and stuff like that so it's kind of what we're going to go with right now also i have the top for this now it is not cut yet here's a look at those fence boards right here but the top is one by six i'm going to cut those in half at four feet and i'm going to put three of them together that will go all the way across the barrel, which gives me approximately a 12 inch overhang on each side of the barrel. Should be good. Now, now you're going to ask yourself, how are you going to secure that top to the barrel? Simple. The leftover piece of one by leftover, <laughs> you're done. Leftover piece of uh, two by six that I got. I'm going to cut it down. And put it 
I have to point the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. But the brain's not connecting all the way with the hand just yet. So here we go. Now, I'm going to take the leftover 2x6. Put it on top here just like this. Go underneath and scribe my line. I'm going to set it down inside here so that it'll be down below the surface. And then I'm going to put two screws in each side. And when I put my top on, my top's going to go across it this way here. I'll go inside and I'll screw it up from the bottom. <laughs> You're not right, I'll screw it up. You watch. I will screw up from the bottom and that's going to hold the top down tight. That is what I have come up with. So that's what we're going to try and achieve today. Uh, I got limited time, which is why I haven't cleaned the shop out to give myself more room. All right, this is exactly eight feet long. We're going to go to the four footer and put a mark. So the way it is, I got that much of a lip showing here. I go to the front. I got about the same there. So what I can do is I can cut a 2x4 and run it down the middle. But that's going to make this even wider than what I really want. I wanted it just as wide as this right here. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the front. Because this is what you're seeing. To the front. You pick it up what I'm throwing down. I don't want to do any more than I have to. How'd we do? Perfect. Y'all are going to have to excuse me. I need to use the bandsaw. Well, we just took a break and went and did the family thing at a Christmas market in London, Ontario. At the Kellogg factory. I've done a video on that place before. It's pretty cool. But trying to get this barrel project done because i've got other projects waiting and uh i need the bandsaw that eric and luke bought me to complete the other projects well i think we're going to uh set this in place top I want the best side up and the best edge forward sounds like something just fell beside the building Let's set that one there for now Okay, so what I'm going to do, this one here is pretty much in the middle. So I'm going to measure underneath each side out so that I'm even on both sides. And then I'm going to bring the other three to match it. I'll be right back. All right, this board being pretty much centered in the barrel, I got 12 and a half overhang here and I got 12 and a half overhang here. So I'm going to bring the rest to match. That way it'll be the same all the way around. But first, I think I'm going to put a little bit of glue on these things. Before you all say anything, I know ideally these should be clamped together. But they won't be. Just give me a heads up. Alright, why am I not clamping this together? Well, main reason is I don't have clamps big enough to clamp this together, so it is what it is. I'm not overly worried about it. I'm now going to screw this from the bottom and keep everything tight. We've got everything screwed down. Our cross member is screwed. This is screwed. Our top is now screwed. But one of the last things we have to do, we've got to put the latch on here to keep it shut. And we are going to sand this down, maybe stain the top, maybe not, but we're going to do something to it. We might give it the old 0W20 treatment. In fact, 
I think that's what we're going to do. The Zero W20 treatment. But that's going to be it for tonight. It is dark out. I think it's probably pushing 11 o'clock. Almost past my bedtime. I'll see you all in the morning. Here we go again. We are closing in on the finish of our barrel. I got the top oiled. I got to do the front. For some reason I forgot that. But I got to do the front. So the top is all oiled up. It's just about dry. Now... We have to put the handle on. So what I'm thinking is, we're going to put the handle right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually screw it right to the face of the door. Now, I still got to get the locking, the locking. I still have to get the latching mechanism in there and figure out how that's going to work. But the two hinges on the door I'm finding this one and this one are not enough. I'm going to have to put a third one in here because the door does want to sag a bit. First things first is we got to take a trip through one of our jars here and see if we can find a machine screw. Oh, oh, I see what's in that one back there. Let's go this one here. Yep, there's one right there. Found one right on top here. That is a small half inch machine screw. I think that'll work perfect. Alright, let's send this screw through and see if it's going to be long enough. That should be plenty right there. Alright, we're going to back that off. We're going to drill a hole in the door. Easy now. Mess that up a little bit. All right. Well, we definitely got to get some wood back there, and we definitely have to put a another screw in the bottom down here because it just wants to walk all over the place. Let's see what happens. Well, you dummy, why would you do that? Okay. Sorry. Oh, I think we got it, folks. I think we got it. Tighten up the bottom a little bit. And there we are. Y'all have a look at that. The screw's coming out from the inside of the door. That one's going in. It works. Now, we gotta come up with the latching mechanism. Might have to uh, put my thinking cap on for that one. Because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here. All right, I'm going to show you all the original idea, but see this little J-hook here? Originally, that was going to be screwed to here. And I got this piece of flat bar here, and I just bent the end out on it for like a thumb lever. So originally, that was going to sit on there like that. This was going to, it's probably going to fall off, but... I was going to rest inside there, and when I wanted to open it up, push down on the thumb piece, right here, bring it up, open the door. When I want to close it, I would just let it go back down. I got to thinking, I don't want to drill any more holes in this thing than I have to. And uh, why make things more complicated? This is just an 11th hour decision. Just made it. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to go to the hardware store tomorrow. By the way, I'm going to call this build complete. But I'm going to go to the hardware store tomorrow. And I'm going to buy magnets. That will stick on here, here, and here. When I shut the door, it's going to serve two purposes. One, it's going to hold the door shut because of the magnet. Two, 
it, the door is not going to go past the opening because the magnet is there stopping the door from going all the way in. So that's going to be it. You really don't want to see me attach magnets to that, do you? Because I can almost guarantee it's not going to be very exciting. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed that. We got the lighting done. This was a bigger project than I thought it was going to be. This being the barrel and table. But I think it turned out pretty good. We got some new, got some new storage. We got a new workbench for my new... Get all dirty. For my new bandsaw that Eric and Luke bought me. And... I see that it's wide enough. Now, now one thing you got to be careful of, this is top heavy. So what I think I may end up doing is putting my, why were you going down there? Anyway, what I think I might do is put my five gallon containers of oil in the bottom of this to add weight so it's not so top heavy. But as I was saying, it's wide enough, the table is, that I could probably get away with putting the bandsaw over here and my drill press over here. That way I can get it up off the floor too. If you got a small shop uh, or a small space, a your wife puts you in the closet to work, it is what it is. Uh, you make do with what you got. This is what we got, so this is what we make do with. Does that make any sense? Absolutely not. But we're trying to maximize the space that we have. So this new storage piece here is going to go over there. And that's going to open up the center quite a bit. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope you all got something out of that uh, DIY storage solution for your small shop. Are we done? No. Uh, however, I did just pick up the tin for the roof from Farmer Paul today. But uh, that's going to require some warmer weather for me to get up there and put that on. But other than that, that's it. That's all I got. If you all like this type of content, please let me know. Leave me a comment down below. If you got better storage solutions, I'm just trying to make them unique. I don't want to just put something in a box or put something on a shelf. So... Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to our channel. We are almost at 6,000 subscribers. All thanks to you guys sharing our videos. And we appreciate that very much. And as always, get outside and enjoy the outdoors. Which reminds me, time for me to get out of here. Later.